Here it is, the Timber Code DC80, the 7-inch portable monitor. I see that on the description they say it's 4K, and even on the box it's written 4K. But under here, let's do a little close-up. Under here they state that it's actually 1920 by 1200, so pixel. So that's not 4K at all. So that's a little bit uh, misleading right there. But anyway, let's see what we have in the box. It's right now. Okay, it came uh, all uh, shrimp wrap, which is nice because then I know that I get a new item, not a return. Let's open it. Ta -da! That's what's in the box right when you open it. So first thing we see, it's what appear to be the product manual. So they don't call it user manual, it's product manual. Now we do have the thank you card slash warranty card. Now, before, that's the screen, but before to touch the screen, let's see what kind of accessory we get. So we do get an HDMI to mini HDMI cable. HDMI to mini HDMI cable here. So that's good. Now we get a one quarter screw to cold shoe, look like, adapter, all right. Another one here, which is a one quarter screw to one quarter a female screw and a cold shoe, all in one, with a little X key. So that allows you to uh, tighten this, those X bolts there. So, interesting. Then we do have uh, uh, what's look like HDMI to micro HDMI. It's interesting. Then we get here what appears to be the power supply. Yes, here we go. Power supply. It has this uh, opening here without the plug because I suppose you can use that in uh, many countries. So there should be the adapter plate here depending on which country you are. Which is good because that means you can use this screen while traveling, doing your filming gig while traveling without having to fight to find an adapter for your equipment. All right, so that should be different plates. Here we go, for different country. Uh, England, US here, and that's European. So you have the US, UK, and European. All right, that's all for accessory I can see. Now let's see the screen itself. Okay, it has some kind of uh, heavy feel to it, which I like. Usually, cheapo equipments are light, and then you know immediately that you are getting something not really worth the money. But here we go. All right, the big reveal. Very nice, very shiny. Look awesome. I like also the smell of new electronic that comes to my face right now so it's nice always nice plus but anyway let's see what kind of port we have and uh, mounting so here we have the one quarter screw and a little bit bigger i forgot uh, the name of that a bigger screw there but one quarter there and a little bit uh, bigger mounting screw right here here it seems to be the speaker here you have uh, av in and then you have the headphone in. Okay. Here we have the same thing with the one quarter thread here and next to it the little bit bigger one. Again, I forgot the name. I'm going to put that on the screen right now. Now, on the other side, oh, some button there. All right, so we have a, a left and right arrow with the push button in the middle. Here we do have the off on button. Here yeah, there is a function one, function two, and function three button. I mean, there's like a C button here. And on the other side, again, the mounting female thread, the same. So on each side, except the top, you have this mounting thread. All right, now let's see some other inputs that I saw over here. So we do have the DC in, power in, and then we have HDMI in and HDMI out. And here, it's interesting, we have a mini USB port. So it's not a micro USB, it's a mini USB port. I don't know yet the use of this. I would have to check the user manual, but it's interesting to note it's there. So HDMI in, HDMI out. All right, 
also now the screen uh, is a little bit weird with some bubbles so i suppose there is like a, a plastic protective plastic on the screen that uh, we have to peel out here we go don't forget to peel that out because if you don't then you are going to wonder why your screen is not nice and shiny and have tons of bubble in it of course right when i remove this plastic now i'm going to get my fingerprint all over the screen so be careful about that it's going to be a fingerprint magnet right now anyway let's put the screen on the side see what else it's in the box oh look at that they give you a nice storage pouch it's like a velvety style pouch to store and transport your screen safely the last but not the least we do have some mounting arm system that you tie it when you find the right position so i have a few of those they are always handy and they end up with the one quarter thread here and female here and male here so that's cool anything else in this box that's it so that's what you got with everything let's put everything there in front of you so you can see quickly everything included in this kit and that's pretty much it going to uh, go a little bit backward to show you so that's all you get with this set now let's go and test that and see how this monitor performs All right, here it is, uh, ready to go. So don't forget to uh, charge it first before using it for the first time. It's easy, you use the AC adapter and you plug it right there in the DC in port. Okay, now it's uh, not fully charged, but it's enough for me to be able to turn it on and mess up a little bit with the settings, see uh, what kind of setting we have and uh, what we can do here with this screen. All right, so pretty basic off on button. Turn it off, pushing it that way, on a, we have a green light and then the screen should turn on. Here we go, temp codes, the logo, and now we have the screen here. So let's connect it and see what we get. So here we go, I uh, mostly got this screen because I wanted to have a secondary monitor while I use my drone over there. So this is my drone setup that I'm going to use and my remote control, which is a smart uh, controller from DJI. It's connected via HDMI port to this monitor. So now I can use this monitor as a secondary monitor. So I have someone else that can look at my footage while I concentrate more on piloting the drone. So which is uh, pretty neat. Now that it's connected, let's see what we get. So turning on the screen again. Here we go. My controller detected a screen connected to it. As you can see right away, we do have a mirror image of what I have on my remote control. I can change the brightness, by the way, if I just touch the screen and put my finger up or down. So that uh, we adjust the brightness of the screen. So let's put 100%. Here you go. Compared to the smart controller, which is already quite bright, but you have an ID for the brightness of the screen. But anyway, so now I'm going to go on my remote, accessing my uh, drone menu. Here we go, here. And as you can see, it's re mirroring exactly what I have on my drone screen, just with adding some more information here about my video coming in the screen so it could be useful i'm pretty sure you can disable that if you don't want that on the setting while i'm concentrating on piloting my drone my uh, spotter or my cameraman actually here uh, the person in charge of the video quality or what i'm going to film can look and uh, direct me using this secondary monitor so which is pretty neat everything i will do here will be reported here. There we go, back to the basic setting on the, my drone remotes, so I can show you here. So you have like uh, this button to push to access some menu here on the side. So you have like, uh, for example, 
we do have the inputs here and volume here volume bar histogram etc it's all the little graphic that is on the screen uh, here you can make put some mark on the screen here there's some other uh, setting and here the picture setting so you can use those button here but you can also use it's a touch screen so you can just use your finger and then you know go in the menu here with your finger basically and change here we go the section you want to work with so that's pretty uh, rich in it so volume for example i'm going to adjust here click on the volume and then i can adjust the volume with my finger or i can use those button to adjust the volume here we go so pretty much the same here also it tells you as soon as you open the volume it tells you what uh, it is getting right now the signal that uh, is sent from uh, the remote to the screen it's uh, 1080 a uh, 60 uh, frame 60 hertz Up, it disappear and it gives you also the date another thing i like also with this screen it's that you have some function button here and you can preset what you want in those function button for example you just go in the menu here and then you go here let's see here you go and now we do have f1 f2 and f3 that uh, are pre-selected so it's fails color on f1 picking on f2 and center mark on f3 so if i want to change that i can just go and now choose what i want for each button this c by the way it's actually uh, a back arrow with a with a whole circle when you click it it allows you to come back uh, for wherever you are for example if you are like deep in the menu and then you click it and you can just go back where you were or just remove the menu altogether so if all those uh, little uh, histogram over here uh, annoys you uh, you can remove them that for example here i have my uh, my uh, sound bar uh, I don't know if, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, if i just touch it and then I'm, I'm going up and down with my finger i can change the volume of the screen but if i don't want this functionality or if i don't want any other uh, information here it's easy you just go there and then you can change it right there you can change see the volume bar right there so now i'm going to make it disappear i'll turn it off and now i can also turn off the histogram here you go that is there histogram off and now i'm going to go down and the vector up off and again i'm going to go down and the rgb i can choose uh, actually what kind of rgb display i want or completely have them off here we go so you, you just honestly you just read the manual it's everything is explained there but you really have control over everything uh, on your screen right there and up back to normal also this will disappear after 15 seconds because it's set to disappear after 15 seconds but if you don't like that you can go there and then you can set that right here see osd timeout it's 15 seconds you can uh, decide that you don't want that to disappear at all 15 seconds is the maximum but you can also make it shorter all right i'll leave it at 15 and now back here we go now i have a clean screen without all the information on it i can really mirror perfectly my screen from my drone